I'm Laura Sheets. Welcome to Extraordinary Indiana. Today we're in Clinton County, located along Interstate 65 between Indianapolis and Lafayette in north central Indiana. Clinton County was formed in 1830 and named in honor of DeWitt Clinton, the architect of the Erie Canal. This land was occupied by the Miami Indians when farmers of mostly German descent settled here. Located on the eastern edge of the tall grass prairie of the central United States, with its rich soil and fewer trees to clear, it was an ideal location for agricultural endeavors. From its inception, this has been a county that works together to make things happen. The county seat, Frankfurt, was platted in 1830 when three brothers, John, William, and Nicholas Pence, donated 60 acres of their own land and $100 to the county commissioners for its founding. It was said that John Pence was a man of foresight who realized the value of a local railway and helped develop Frankfurt as an early railroad and business center following the Civil War. This is the third Clinton County Courthouse, built in the early 1880s. It still stands today as the center of downtown Frankfurt. With me is Shane Sheridan, the Executive Director of the Clinton County Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development. So tell me how John Pence is manifest today in Clinton County. Well, John Pence being our founder uh, and his whole family uh, moving here and, and, and settling here in Frankfurt uh, really brings us a spirit of engagement. He engaged his family, he engaged friends, they decided to come in, they settled here in our community, and then they went to work. Uh, they, they were very good entrepreneurs because not only were they farming, but they also were making land deals. So can you give me an example of how you're building on the past? here in Clinton County. The Clinton County Chamber and Clinton County Economic Development really believes in preservation and the opportunity of taking something that is old and really preserving the past and we're doing that in our own building that we just purchased here and we have been working on making that a co-working space and allowing uh, young entrepreneurs much like John Pence back in the day uh, coming into town looking for the opportunity to to build their business uh, create a space that would allow them to grow. So tell us about some of the other communities in Clinton County. Well, we're, we're blessed to have five other communities in Clinton County besides the Frankfort County seat. Uh, and they all have their unique charm and own personality. Uh, Colfax, of course, was the home of Miller's Catfish for many years, and many people would come up. Colfax still a very charming community. Mulberry uh, has the same kind of charm, and we, we see more growth going in uh, Mulberry. And then you have Michigan Town that is over in that, uh, kind of tucked away in that northeastern part of Clinton County, uh, the Ganders. And then you have uh, Rossville, which is in the north northwest sector of Clinton County and what can you say about Rossville it's kind of its own little kingdom but Rossville they have a such a desire and passion uh, to to do things with excellence and then you have Kirkland which Kirkland has been on the rise uh, with the investments here locally uh, that have taken place there and it is the antique capital of, of Clinton County so we have a lot of great communities and we invite anyone and everyone to come check out our small town charm so tell me about some of the housing options that are available here. We have a mix, an eclectic mix of housing. We have uh, newer homes that are being built. In fact, new rooftops are going up all the time. And we have even some incentives now that we have uh, put together uh, for homes that are older than 50 years or new home builds. So we've got some tax incentives so that we can encourage and attract people to come in and look at either new building or renovating uh, an older home. So your industrial park began in the 1950s. Tell me about that a little bit. Right. Uh, the railroad was in decline. Uh, we, we needed to make some changes. So we had a leadership team that uh, created the land trust, uh, went out and acquired some property. Uh, then they started knocking on doors all over this country. Uh, Peter Paul was our first uh, uh, acquisition, and Peter Paul started making the mounds and the almond joys right here in Frankfort, Indiana. So. Uh, that was the one, and then after that, it was just a domino effect. And so now we have about 27 different industry uh, folks that are out in our industrial park. But the industrial park uh, is really an example of seed planting. And these people that had a vision and had a dream back in the 50s, planting the seed, and now as an economic development director, I get to reap a lot of those, those benefits and that harvest on a, on a daily basis. Well, thank you, Shan, and we'll take a closer look at some of the major employers in Frankfurt's Industrial Park and meet some of the entrepreneurs and community leaders who are continuing the Clinton County tradition of engagement and problem solving in our upcoming segments. For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Laura Sheets. 
Though farming is the foundation of the Clinton County's economy, industry built on that base following the Civil War. Just as John Pence foresaw the benefit of the railroads in the mid-1800s, county leaders foresaw the growth of another form of transportation in the mid-20th century. With construction of the new U.S. interstate system, truck transportation offered greater flexibility for shipping goods in and out of the county. A land trust was formed to develop and market a new industrial park on Frankfurt's west side. Near this new industrial park was an already existing soybean processing plant that was built in 1946 by the Swift Company. ADM, which now owns this plant, purchased the operation in 1985. ADM produces soybean meal, oil, and soy hulls, which are used in a variety of livestock feed products. This facility also produces high oleic soybean oil, a specialized oil which is lower in saturated fat. High oleic soybeans are a unique variety of soybeans grown under contracts with local farmers. Frito-Lay opened its core plant here in 1980. This facility makes Lay's, Doritos, and Cheetos brand products. They added a second plant in 1990, which supplies their products to all of the United States and Canada. With 1,400 employees working three shifts, seven days a week, it is the largest Frito-Lay campus in the United States. Rick Stefaniak is the Frankfurt site director. We've got a great workforce here that's been offered to Frito-Lay in Clinton County, and we've been here for over 35 years. And uh, the education level has been outstanding, the technical capability, and we've got a lot of folks that work here at Frito-Lay that are leaders in the community, so our, our role is to figure out how to make sure we keep them engaged in our business and leverage all the skill sets that they offer to us. What are some of your biggest challenges with workforce development? Uh, a couple of positions that are most challenging in, the, in all the time that I've been here have been OTR drivers, over-the-road drivers, and also uh, maintenance technicians. So we've got great careers. Um, at both the hourly level as well as the management level and uh, a lot of good paying jobs here. What local resources have been helpful in workforce development here in Clinton County? There's four school corporations here, particularly uh, the Frankfurt Community School Corporation. We've partnered with them and, and actually spent some time with their school administrators and getting in, in their school, uh, speaking to students, helping them with resumes. And then uh, since Ivy Tech has been brought here by the mayor and the chamber and the community leaders, uh, we've partnered very closely with them. In fact, we're working with them on programs that um, help develop students that eventually can uh, be great uh, free-to-lay employees down the road and offer them a career opportunity here. So I started working uh, for Frito-Lay in 1998 as a part-time utility tech. Got into full-time and now with the, the self-nomination program, I jumped from being an hourly to a salary manager, um, which now, you know, sky's the limit with that because there's different roles that I can, I can take um, with this position. An important part of this, the story of this building is that it was a closed, non-economic value-added facility. Tell us a little bit about the story of how you converted this to an economic value-added facility that now employs more than 40 people. Neon Packers came in. We met with the city. We met with the Chamber of Commerce and the county commissioners. Worked on this property that was outdated. It was a closed former USDA inspected food plant. We rehabbed a few of the rooms and actually brought in more modern state-of-the-art equipment to turn it into the processing facility that we have today. Can you just describe for us the workforce here in Clinton County and Frankfurt means to you and your business here? You know, Frankfurt's a very special place. We found that the employees here are very dedicated and very hardworking. The latest addition to the industrial park is Con Agra. With over one and a half million square feet under roof, this is one of the largest warehouses in North America. Craig Weiss is VP of Supply Chain at ConAgra. We were consolidating four distribution centers from around the Midwest into the largest facility that ConAgra Foods has ever built. Tell us about the importance of workforce in your decision-making process. The local workforce and the availability of labor in the region was a strong deciding factor for us. It gave us a, a comfort level that we were going to be able to find the workers we need to meet the demands of the changing workforce. Craig, how important was local and state government collaboration to you? The combination of the city, the county, and the state and their ability to work together was, was truly above and beyond our expectation. The project involved the creation of a, of a new road, cutting off of a state highway, and the ability for all three groups to work together and provide us with a timely response and most importantly, timely execution enabled us to complete the project on time and under budget. Ease of transportation has been key to the growth of major industry in Clinton County. Beginning with the railroads and expanding with its close proximity to Interstate 65, there are currently a number of well-paying jobs available for qualified workers in Clinton County.
For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Eric Doden. Hello, I'm Ron Gifford. One measure of a community's quality of place is how it provides for the health and well-being of its residents. Healthcare has long been a concern in Clinton County. From its first hospital, opened in 1899 on the second floor of a retail building, to its first freestanding hospital, to the present day St. Vincent Frankfurt Hospital. I met Christy Bledsoe, who leads the team at St. Vincent. We have both inpatient and outpatient services here at Frankfurt. And so we have an inpatient unit with um, 20 beds, and we see um, a lot of disease processes, whether it's congestive heart failure, diabetes, pneumonia, those types of processes, or post-operative, so we have surgical services as well. Um, we do maintain OB services, so um, we have the opportunity for uh, mothers to deliver here, stay close to home where their families can be close. And we also um, partner with Ivy Tech and also IUK and Kokomo and do some of the clinical nurse training um, through our hospital for their clinical times. I am from the Clinton County area, so I really enjoyed working here at St. Vincent Frankfurt Hospital. They were familiar, they got familiar with me and I got familiar with the hospital itself. Once I graduated from Ivy Tech Community College, I was able to apply here and I actually was hired on full time here. Healthcare services are also available at IU Health's primary care office with specialty clinics. Howard Community Health Network provides an outpatient clinic for behavioral health needs. Carol Price has led the Healthy Communities of Clinton County Coalition since 2009. Our coalition is a group of people who have partnered together to improve the health in Clinton County. And we do that by reducing the risk factors that lead to chronic disease, such as obesity, such as tobacco use, things like that. So we do a lot on trying to get change policies and change systems and change the environment. For instance, we can't expect people to walk and bike unless they have a safe place to do so. Um, so we work on getting more bike trails and more sidewalks and things like that. Uh, we want kids to walk and bike to school, so we work on how to get kids to do that safely. We try to reach out into the entire county. We have walkways th that we've created in all of the five small incorporated towns as well. Um, we do a lot of our programming in work sites, in churches. So we're pulling the whole community together when we're working on all of this. Wesley Manor is a retirement community located in Frankfurt since 1961. It offers garden homes as well as three levels of care for its residents. Kevin Ward is Wesley Manor's executive director. The retirement center is a place where we offer independent living apartments, assisted living apartments. We also have memory care and skilled nursing where people rehab to home. But, uh, it, you know, it's a kind of fun place to live. I like to think of it sometimes as a cruise ship because we have uh, a bowling alley. Uh, we have um, a swimming pool. We have a full service bank, we show movies, we have a lot of social events here that uh, residents enjoy participating in. So uh, it, it's a great place for people to call home. Recreational opportunities in Clinton County include a disc golf course at Camp Column, fishing at the Frankfurt Lagoons, TPA Park, and Frankfurt Commons Golf Course. Clinton County offers its residents a diverse quality of life. The culture of engagement established by community leaders along with the partnerships in place, have created a strong foundation to face the challenges that the future may bring. For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Ron Gifford. The entrepreneurial spirit in Clinton County has been present since its founding. That atmosphere continues today in a wide range of businesses operated by residents with a vision and passion for their work. John Virtue is a Clinton County native who purchased a local bar and restaurant eight years ago. He expanded the food part of the business, adding family-friendly seating on the Main Street Grill and a theme to Johnny V's Sports Pub. As his business grew, John bought additional buildings in Frankfurt. In 2015, he purchased Pepe's Mexican Restaurant, also located on the Courthouse Square. John is excited about the future of this community. I've lived downtown above the restaurant since I bought it in 2008 and it, it's, it's great living downtown. The business is really good. We've expanded. There's just a lot of positive vibe in downtown Frankfurt. It's a growing thing and there's a, I know of some plans there's going to be a lot of other apartments in the future. Michelle Cox began working on the assembly line at Federal Mogul in 1988. 
Within a year, she developed a hobby of selling crafts and antiques at area craft fairs and church bazaars. That sideline grew into a store called Simple Time Antiques. For 11 months, she maintained her second shift manufacturing job while operating the store by day. Her business was so successful that Michelle left her factory job to devote her work life to Simple Time Antiques. We have five vendors that, that help us out. Three of us do the big furniture, the rest of them do smalls. And they bring it all in and I put it all together. And the reason I do that is so you can see how it's going to look in your home. It's just worked out. We're like one big family. The community has been completely backing us the whole time. Bridie Colby is a native New Zealander who immigrated to the United States after meeting her future husband Scott through the internet. Scott's grandparents had a bakery in Frankfurt in the early 1900s. Bridie's dream was to open a restaurant, and with Scott's experience in baking and donut making, together they opened Bridie's Bakery in 2014. I like using my grandma's recipe. It reminds me of my grandma, and I have one particular recipe that actually reminds me of my grandfather, and that's my shortbread. I was inspired by my mom. When I was a kid growing up, she was always working in the kitchen. She was always baking. It's been quite a roller coaster ride, um, but we've enjoyed it and uh, we're, we're very thankful to be part of Frankfurt's community. Next door to Bridie's Bakery is Studio 6. This art gallery is the creation of Frankfurt native Wendy Hall. Following high school, she attended the Art Institute of Indianapolis. Returning to Clinton County, Wendy began displaying her work at their annual hot dog festival. She was then asked to open a seasonal pop-up gallery by Frankfurt's Main Street organization. Based on that gallery's success, Studio 6 is now open year-round. We have a lot of support from local business owners and a lot of community members come up and they make an effort to come up every month, sometimes every week. We have a different exhibit every single month, so we, there's constantly new work and it's really good to feel that support here because we've not really had a whole lot of cultural nightlife here before, so it's been fun. Kim Stevens is executive director of the Frankfurt Main Street organization. We had a three-way win. It was a win for the property owner because now she has two businesses that are occupying empty spaces that she had. Um, we have a new bakery in our community now that we didn't have and we have our first ever art gallery. So we are extremely excited about the um, new entrepreneurs in our community as well as the fact that we have two storefronts that are completely filled. Mark Hodges' business has evolved with computer technology since ACCS began in 1981. This Clinton County native was attending Purdue University, majoring in engineering when he got a call from the Clinton County Bank who needed help with their financial computer system. Today they are a regional provider of fiber, wireless, internet, networking, and a variety of IT services. Finding employees in uh, Frankfurt was a concern of mine at first, but it's worked out really well. We've uh, had no trouble finding people to work here. About every three years we have to reinvent ourselves and find some other niche to get into and, and something to do. But with technology changing all the time, that's pretty easy. We use the community as a testing bed for everything we do. We try out new ideas on them, new products, and they've tolerated a lot of, uh, a lot of failures and silliness from us, but uh, we've been able to uh, to make things right and move forward and sell those products other places. It's worked out great. These are just a few of the businesses that are contributing to the vitality of Clinton County. Together they are providing a strong foundation for the next generation to make their mark upon. For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Laura Sheets. One of the keys to a robust economy is talent. A well-trained workforce ready to fill available jobs. Clinton County leaders recognized this need and in 2014 launched an innovative initiative to address it. Shan Sheridan is the leader of the Clinton County Chamber of Commerce and the local economic development group. Shan, tell us what led to the creation of this forum. Well, really out of necessity, Ron, we looked at our situation with the unemployment rate and manufacturers coming to me, uh, hey, I need people. <laughs> we need to attract more people. So we brought the people that we thought were the ones that 
could help us with this in the room, and that was educators and manufacturers. Uh, one of our first conversations was a manufacturer asking an educator, why can't uh, a person on my floor at 19 years old read a tape measure? And so that really started the dynamic in the conversation. So what kind of programs have come out of this partnership? Well, one of the programs has really been more of an attitude. Through partnerships with Frito-Lay, and partnerships with Ivy Tech, uh, our, our, our CPT, which is our Certified Production Technician a Training Program. I just think the opportunity of engaging education, students, young people, to think about manufacturing and industry differently than maybe their mom or dad thought about, because it's not the same, it's not dirty, it's very clean, it's very high tech, and it's an opportunity for them to make a good living. So when we talk about that spectrum of lifelong learning, there are some adults, they've had some yep. college or earned some credits, they'd like to go back. Talk about how the Frankfurt Adult Learning Center really helps that group. It really serves two purposes. For that high school student that's really struggled, that needs to get their GED, that needs to have that qualification, and then the adult learner who may be 22, 23, 24 years old, um, that says, I, I, hey, I'm never gonna go in, I'm never gonna find the place of most potential. Eric, tell us what the Frankfurt Adult Learning Center does. Well, there's three primary things we do. One is prep for what used to be called the GED that's now referred to as the Indiana High School Equivalency Diploma. We also do college prep for Ivy Tech, Purdue, Vincennes University, IU, whichever uh, university that, that a student is going on to. The third thing we do is get people on a career pathway called Work Indiana which offers things such as CDL, Class A or B, Welding, Certified Nursing Assistant, CPT, which stands for a Certified Production Technician. The Crossing Education Center is a faith-based alternative school. Its mission is to empower struggling students to become contributing members of their communities through academics, job training, and faith-based mentoring. Scott Scales is a local insurance agent who works with interns from The Crossing. We're trying to teach them life skills that after they get out of the crossing they can go forward and maybe make a career out of working in an office and everything. Based on my experience here I would like to get my insurance license after I graduate high school and then after I work here a few years then I'd like to go and run my own agency. Ivy Tech Community College opened its campus in downtown Frankfurt in 2013. We work closely with all four of the county high schools um, we build classes around their needs, build classes around the industrial park needs. And I think this community is thriving. I think we're going places and, and I look to see uh, great things in the future and, and hopefully Ivy Tech is, is going to be a part of that. Community engagement and education have been hallmarks of Clinton County since its founding. With a strong partnership between the business, education and civic sectors, the future for workforce development here is bright indeed. For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Ron Gifford. So we have seen the growth in energy that Clinton County has experienced and met some of the people who are committed to making their community a better place. They have a sense of honoring the past while building for the future. Frankfurt Mayor Chris McBarnes has brought his energy and vision back to his hometown and shared with me his thoughts about his community's future. In the city of Frankfurt, we understand that in order to move forward, we have to know where we've been. So we celebrate our past here in the city, but we embrace our future. That's why we're preserving this beautiful building that was built in 1892 and is known as Old Stony. So future generations understand the magnificence of Frankfurt's history. We're building an amenity infrastructure that allows families to grow in a safe environment and recreate and thrive within. We understand that those high level jobs in order to attract those developers, we need, need to create a city that attracts the workforce that will produce the people they need to fill those jobs. I want site selectors, developers, and those high tech employers to know that we're going to have a city that's going to attract a 21st century workforce of families. And what are some of the specific projects that you're working on? We're creating amenities within our downtown that bolsters retail development, that synergizes private investment. This will attract people from the outside of our community in to spend money in our retail market and help our small businesses thrive. Citizen Voice is a very important cornerstone in my administration. We listen to what the people have to say. Our residents, our small business owners, our industrial park leaders, it's their ideas and their voices that have culminated into all the projects that you're hearing and seeing happen in our community. 
If a family moves here, if an industry comes here, expect an all-hands-on-deck experience to make sure you're successful, you're safe, and you enjoy your time here in the Gym City. You know, moving north about two and a half hours, my family of seven, um, was a big transition. Really found that the people are very open, honest, um, ready to get their shirt off the back to us, and just made the transition excellent, and one of the greatest places we've ever lived. Everybody works together, um, everyone from the mayor to the chamber to the businesses uh, to, the, to everyone. Um, we all get along, we all have this common goal of making the community great, and so that, that is a positive impact. The community leaders are doing a lot to make this a better place to live, uh, both personally and in helping us on a professional side from an industrial park perspective. When you're going through a search process, a lot of times you hear a lot of great things and you never know whether those are going to come to fruition during the project execution. Looking back on the experience we've had with the city of Frankfurt and the state of Indiana, they truly have held their end of the bargain. And in hindsight, you know, everything they said they were going to do and committed to, they've not only done but exceeded our expectations. From its founding, Clinton County has looked forward to the changes that life inevitably brings. Through its growth and development over nearly two centuries, the county has placed itself in a position to prosper. As Clinton County continues to anticipate its growth, it will be interesting to see how it evolves in the coming years. For Extraordinary Indiana, I'm Eric Doden.